What is up, beautiful family? Oh, 2023 is finally over. It was a beautiful year, and I think it set me on a really good trajectory for this year. And uh, it's January 1st, so I figured I'd make a video, talk about some of the things that uh, I have already coming up so fast in uh, the year of 2024. <sighs> so last year, I got my passport for the first time ever and a friend hit me up who'd been to Mexico a few times and uh, you know he didn't have to say much to convince me to go to the Yucatan Peninsula so I booked that trip that's coming up in March 12th I'm gonna go there for like I think just roughly a week I think that's all I can get away for but um, I am going to Rishikesh India for yoga teacher training finally so I have been practicing yoga for roughly five years. Uh, hatha and vinyasa, some kundalini mixed in between. Took a break from vinyasa for a while because I broke my wrist. You all probably see it in some of the videos. If you've been following, been watching, the history built out, things like that. But I figured I would document uh, a little bit of the, the pre-YTT and then the, the post YTT on my experience. Um, it's a big trip, a lot of logistics, foreign country. So I figured why not document it? You know, I document a lot of stuff uh, in my real life, in my real business, Hype Studios production, and Eclipse Lighting and Grip. Uh, just, it, it's kind of life. So whenever I have to hit record, it kind of gets pushed to the wayside. But anyways, Rishikesh. So I guess let's start at the beginning of my yoga journey. Um, I was doing some a lot of fasting uh, in recovery, things of that nature, and I was on fire. And I think it was around Christmas time and I had, I had ran into a yoga instructor by accident that someone had told me about a few months prior. And um, I introduced myself it was at some meditation shop or something. She was Christmas shopping. I was there like looking at singing bowls. And um, I said, do you own a yoga studio? We was in a different state <laughs> whenever this happened. She, she wasn't in the same state as her studio. So she's like, yeah. And she pulls out a flyer out of her jacket. And she's like, you should come by sometime. And uh, a week went past. I think it was like a Friday. And I was just on fire. I mean, I didn't know what to do with myself. I had so much energy and uh, it just, did, just didn't even know how to handle it. I didn't know what I didn't know. So my car just kind of drives to the yoga studio. Uh, I say that it kind of drives, but now I know like God, the universe sort of did that for me. I'm sitting down in the parking lot and I'm, and I'm questioning all of this, you know, and I'm talking to God about it and I'm like, I don't know if these people are going to understand me. You know, all the fears, all the fear-driven stuff kicked in immediately. And, and he sort of told me, like, I brought you here. So I opened the door and I got out of the car. I think my dog's snoring, if you can hear it. So I opened the door and got out of the car and went to the studio and I'm like, I'm just a wreck, you know, from fasting and then from this new experience. And uh, Gabriella's mother was there, uh, the co-owner of the studio. And I was like, I, I don't even know if I have the right clothes on. You know, I had I think I had some like joggers or something on and Lord knows what at the time. And uh, she said, oh, you need your body. And I was like, OK, <laughs> like I need real simple, real simple instructions. So. She's like, oh, you need your body. And I'm like, okay, I, I can do that. I'm here. You know, I'm here. I just got the download from God. Like, I brought you here. Like, I know what, what the signs look like. And I did yoga. And I was immediately, immediately sold. Like, I think um, the arches of my feet hurt really bad because I do a lot of hiking. And I walk on concrete at the studio. And... My lower back was hurting and I was fasting and I had all this like what I know today is now blockage, but I had all this uh, energy stuck in my body from from the fasting and from years of of all the things, whatever. And um, 
by like the second or third class that I did yoga, my feet were better, my lower back was better, and I just it just felt right. I got coaches now talking about it. So I mostly practice hatha vinyasa, and hatha is what I start, started out on, uh, and then moved into kundalini breath work and stuff too. So, but yeah, hatha has always stuck with me. It's always been there for me. It, you know, uh, it's just a nice, smooth pace, meditative um, sort of yoga for me. And uh, just allows me to like not have to make any decisions because I'm an entrepreneur. And I'm constantly having to make decisions and pay bills. And I'm single and I don't have any kids. So the home life and the business life, I'm four businesses. So it's like, it's a lot. So when I would go to yoga, I could just let in a yoga and sh let someone tell me what to do for an hour. I didn't have to think. I didn't have to make no decisions. There was no emails, phone calls, nothing. So I fell in love with it. And we're going on five years now. And the studio has held teacher training every year. And I've just never really felt like I wanted to pursue a path. And I still don't know if I'm going to still pursue a path in yoga teacher training. But I feel like it's at least time to deepen my personal practice. And unfortunately, I couldn't make it to theirs this year. But what that made me do was start researching it. I started feeling called immediately. Like... As soon as they announced the yoga teacher training, I was supposed to go to Columbia. That didn't work out. So I had a little bit of money saved uh, to like somewhat cushion something here, either home life business overhead or the trip there. And uh, I reached out to a friend here locally that teaches Kundalini. And I said, you studied in India. Where did you go? And she sent me the link to Rishikesh Yogi's Yogshala. So I started like looking into that, you know, and <laughs> asking her all the questions. And, uh, you know, it turns out you, you can go there. Uh, it's going to be maybe a little bit cheaper or the same price as most yoga teacher trainings here in the U.S., I feel like. Um, but it's also travel. Like I'm traveling abroad. So I have to factor that in too of like the experience. So uh, I think one of the biggest reasons why I haven't uh, done yoga teacher training today is because I'm ha I had this underlying fear of like I'm going to lose my practice. And I always take things that like work for me or that I enjoy, whether it's, you know, sewing and handmade clothes in one of my businesses or camera work and photography and studio or movies, lighting movies, things like that. I always take this passion things and it ends up like turning into a business, making some sort of money out of it. And then it's a different, different sort of exchange. So that kept me at bay for a while. And also like the ego trip of it all. And, you know, I listen to Ram Dass every night for the past seven years, I fell asleep to like Ram Dass lectures. And he, you know, and I've been sober for 10 years. So I know what, like, I know what being someone looks like or thinking I'm someone. And, you know, he talks often a lot about, like, becoming someone. And then, like, as soon as you realize, like, you become someone, then you kind of got to work to becoming no one again, like, fairly quickly, especially for people like me, uh, like, that has put in the work and that knows the signs of, you know, becoming someone or being someone egotistically. Now that's my karmic journey. That, that's, that's my stuff. So, you know, some people can be someone and they might not realize it and they'll go through life happy, joyous and free and that's fine. And, but that's just not been my story. And I wanted to make sure that I was ready, you know, that I was, that I, had been working on like healthy boundaries for other people and for myself for years. I'm a water sign. So I had a reading a few years ago and the reader told me, she was like, your life lesson is, is boundaries because water doesn't know boundaries. And it kind of like blew my mind. I was like, Oh man, like, 
okay. You know, then I, I, for one, I stopped feeling broken, like I was doing something wrong, you know, because she that, that that made so much sense. So I started like working on healthy boundaries for myself, uh, being a safe space, creating safe spaces for other people and, you know, all, the, all that stuff. So I wanted to go into, I didn't want it to make me someone uh, with putting in so much work and recovery and staying sober and I've had multiple spiritual awakenings just off the back of that, off of doing that deep inner work, um, step work. I've had the same sponsor for over you know 10 years and and we talk all the time. And every time I talk to him, he, even after 10 years, like he'll tell me something that I've never even heard before. It's like he still blows my mind almost every time I talk to him. So, you know, I know I know what it's like to know some things and then or think I know some things and I know I know what it's like to be claircognizant and clairvoyant and see other people's stuff and I know what it's like to try and help at the wrong times and uh or if they have the capacity to help or you know all all the it's a slippery slope where it can be so going into an area of my life to where, you know, I went into yoga vulnerable suffering in my own ways and other people will be too. And I just wanted to make sure like I was ready for that and just be a yoga teacher and not not get caught up in any traps or anything. So I've, I've, I'm sort of restrained from doing that thus far, but uh, I feel like, I feel like finally in a position to where, you know, I have some boundaries for myself and uh, uh, healthy boundaries for other people as well. And uh, getting called to learn, you know, the anatomy behind it, uh, the philosophy behind it. And, you know, just to strengthen my own, my own practice and add to my own life from the source, you know, from, from the birthplace of India. And, you know, uh, and even outside of that, like to travel more. So there's just so many reasons, like the more I thought about it, the more it made sense. So here we are. Uh, One thing to sort of keep me in check on the whole process of it all and to sort of like keep me at bay was I did something that was super hard for me that I've never done before in my life. And I started to go fund me and a lot of people won't understand it. And, uh, everything, everything that I do is just me. I save the money. I do the thing. I accomplish the goal. I see the experience. I complete the task. And then, you know, and then it's off to the next thing. And I thought, thought about a a teaching my teacher told me many years ago. And he said, Alan, sometimes people want to help you as bad as you want to help other people. And if you don't allow them, you'll steal their blessings. And my pride, my ego uh, didn't want to create that. But also... I didn't want to experience it alone. And not everyone can run off to India, you know, and a lot of people do believe in me and have supported me over the past 10 years on just literally everything that I do. And they, they do want to help and they want to be a part of it. They want to live vicariously through my life and whatever that means, whether that's, you know, messaging or buying message me, Hey, you know, I see you or uh, buying my, some of my handmade products, clothes or whatever or photography or at the studio like they're always just they're always just adding to my life and investing in me and what an ego trip it was to (laughs) sort of to start this GoFundMe because uh I have to allow people to help me and I really the more I thought about it I was like this is like I I need to do this before I go over there. I need to remain humble. And I want to take people with me through this journey. 
and you know there hasn't been thousands of dollars donated but there's there's been there's been some and now I get to take those people to India with me you know in spirit and I get to continue that my journey with them and to pay it forward and to help other people and practice some of that heart opening it's been a heart opener it really has like every time I share that thing or post it or give an update about the trip or things of that nature it's like my ego just crumbles a little bit more um but so does stuff you know like shame as well like it, just putting myself out there and being vulnerable and letting other people add to my life like I add to other people's lives it, it's been a process and not everyone not everyone's going to understand it but those who do do those who know know and it's it's been a beautiful gift you know I've almost cried several times about you know when I see someone donate or what they say or send me a message and I'm just like man you know had I not been vulnerable and put myself out there like that because I do need help we all need we could all use a little help <laughs> whether it's a pat on the back an extra twenty dollars uh whatever you know we just allow people to help us and that's kind of how the world go, goes around so even that I like I'm so curious to see how that's going to play out in one year five years you know ten years on this moment of like doing what I didn't want to do and sort of going public with the GoFundMe and you know if I didn't even raise five dollars it's fine I will get it you know I will get the job done like I always do but it, I, it's a lonely journey when I do that <laughs> you know it's it's a lonely journey so you know my this is kind of my way of like bringing other people in so interesting to see how that's going to play out uh prepping for the trip so I have a friend in India, lucky, luckily, that I've been talking to. And he sort of kind of gave me a rundown about some logistics and stuff. Um, but I've been in contact with um, the Yogashala and uh, Rishikesh in, oh, via WhatsApp. They've been super responsive and helpful and all the things. Uh, give me as much information as I can. Um, it's like daytime it's you know it's, it's it's a big time difference here so it's like wake up respond go to sleep you know it's it's the thing but um uh, i had my passport i applied for my visa it's new it's been new years and holidays so i haven't received anything back from that now the process was fairly simple outside of <laughs> the uploading photos of certain size and uh megabyte and all that stuff which is fine like it's all yoga right uh got it done applied for that i think it was it got the year thing for 40 bucks because uh, i'm not going into march and i couldn't do it that far ahead and from january i couldn't apply for march so just went ahead and got the 40 dollar thing for a year and then i started looking at flights and i thought man you know this is gonna chew up the budget you know 1900 bucks guaranteed and um I looked for several nights in a row, just like trying to wrap my mind about flying into New Delhi and then getting on another plane and flying into the to the local airport there or, you know, taxiing six hours. Um, cheapest, excuse me, uh, the cheapest uh, option there or the most convenient, you know, I'd sleep at the airport at night because if so, I'll just drive, uh, I'll get a taxi at night and <laughs> roll in six, you know, for six hours versus sleeping for six hours in an airport. Lots of things to consider. So I ended up getting a flight, finding a flight for a thousand dollars. That's 900 bucks, five to 900 dollars that I'd be saving. And it was like the third day that I was looking, I woke up one day and I was like, I'm going to book it regardless, you know, regardless of what it is. After all, it is still a vacation. So let's enjoy it. And then I, I get on that morning and there was a flight for like a thousand eighty five. And of course, all the taxes and fees and things like that. But 
you know, and I'm booking for three months in advance, or well, two, I'm, I'm hit, heading out February 26th. So a few days early, staying a few days late. But just the alignment of it all, you know, it's a big trip. It's going to be some money. That's fine. But I'm just so excited for this new chapter in my life and the way that um, 2023 happened into 2024. You know, I got the Airstream out after three years of remodel this year. We took it on its maiden voyage. I don't know if I documented any of it. <laughs> I went out like four times in it. Because I went to a couple of yoga retreats, which are beautiful. The um, My Path Yoga Fest in Kentucky, Harrisburg, Kentucky. Check it out if you haven't. Uh, the the studio that I do yoga at hosted the Inner Warrior. You can look them up. It's just a beautiful yoga retreat on a 400 acre farm with vendors and workshops and yoga and great energy. And then um, took it to. Uh, Took it to um, back down there because they also host a drum, drum and dance circle festival. It's like a festival over the weekend. Uh, took it back down to the to the uh, Terrapin Hill Farm is what it's called in Harrodsburg, Kentucky. And then I took it to the farm, which is is in Tennessee. It's like the oldest one of the oldest like hippie commune, intentional community kind of deals uh, in the United States. It's been around since the seventies. And uh, took it down there for a drum and dance clinic festival that they had and ran some video for them. But it's just been so amazing to finally get the Airstream out. And I'll do a whole nother video on that, like what that was like after three years and it being like the, mo the least instant gratification thing I've ever done in my life. Like three years of doing this one thing with like, I haven't even been able to take it out yet. But I tell you, I've had some of the most fun I've ever had in my life just sitting just in my driveway remodeling that thing and learning and learning about electricity and plumbing. And, and I, I kind of had an idea already, but it's, it's a different scope. <laughs> it's a different thing in an RV, in an Airstream, where nothing's square. Y'all have seen the videos, hopefully. If not, check the, check the playlist out if you're into that sort of thing. But uh, just getting it out, man. Sleeping in it for the first time, using the compost tool for the first time, taking the first shower in it and testing the precision temp water heater that I got. Like, all the things. And it all worked. <laughs> and, and it worked on the second time. And it worked on the third time. And it worked on the fourth time. And hauling it's a dream. You know, it trails really, really well. I went and weighted it. I think I added like 800 pounds to it with the custom build out. But I'll go into all that. But I'm just glad to be back documenting this stuff. And I just wanted to make this video uh, because I want to watch it one day. I want to see the smile on my face and the excitement, you know, in my in my uh, demeanor and things like that. And uh, just to look back on. It's a beautiful journey. <laughs> it's just my face hurts from smiling. Uh, I have such a blessed life. And so many good people in it, you know, to help me along the way. And uh, I think I'm going to end it there. Uh, until next time, peace.